Hello, this is Chuck Carnival. With this video, I'm going to share the research I've been doing on Penske Automotive Group. What I have here on the graph is a plotting of the company's earnings per share since 2010, actually the beginning of 2010. And I want you to notice this orange line is simply drawn as a multiple of 20 times each year's company's earnings. So the first thing that attracted me here was the 20% growth rate. This company has consistently grown earnings since the beginning of 2010 at a rate of 20%. However, I also want to point out that that earnings growth has begun to slow down in recent years. Last year, earnings only grew by 7% and 12% the previous year. But nevertheless, this is a very excellent earnings growth rate since 2010. The next thing I want to add to this graph are the dividends. The companies began paying a dividend in 2011 and that dividend has grown very nicely as you can see from 34 cents all the way up to $1.14 that they paid last year. In fact, the company has increased their dividend for 23 consecutive quarters in a row. This is very important because what I'm really looking for and looking at when I first discovered Penske was a quality dividend growth stock that I could utilize in current portfolios because I feel most of the blue chip dividend aristocrats have become overvalued. I'm looking for something between a two and a half and a three and a half percent yield. Looking at the fast facts here, Penske currently yields 2.7 percent. I'll get into this later. It's available at a blended PE ratio 11.2 in contrast to a normal P.E. ratio of 14.1. It's a mid-cap, 3.86 billion market cap, and only has 26% debt to capital. So all these attributes look very, very attractive to me. So next, I'm now going to bring in the stock price. These are monthly closing stock prices. And I do want you to notice that the price has tracked earnings, but the price has never really traded at a 20 P.E. ratio. When I add the normal P.E. ratio, you'll discover that the company trades as a reference line at around 14 times earnings and it currently it's obviously below that. The blue line represents a P.E. ratio of 14. So the stock is very attractively valued at these rates. And I do want to show you that every time the stock has traded at a P.E. ratio below the 14 P.E. ratio, these would have been excellent times to buy the stock. Even though it went from undervalued to undervalued here, it still would have generated a 22.7% annualized rate of return had you bought it when it was undervalued. Perhaps even more interesting, if you bought it when the P.E. P.E. ratio is low like it is today and then let it revert to the mean and go back to a normal P.E. ratio, your rates of return are even significantly higher. There's a very strong correlation between the company's price and its normal P.E. ratio and obviously it's been undervalued for over a year now. However, recently the stock has been on a tear and it's up over 5% today as I'm producing this video. So I'm very attracted to that. When I add um, the dividends after they're paid out to the line, you get a full expression. The area below the white line, which are dividends plotted, shows the payout ratio. It has about a 30% payout ratio and management's committed to that. So everything that I'm looking for, I see in Penske Automotive Group. It has a low valuation. It has an above market dividend yield approaching 3%, a very attractive dividend growth rate and a great dividend record and management's commitment to continue to maintain that dividend going forward. Since my primary attraction here has been for the dividend income, I'm looking for dividend growth stocks currently. Next, I want to show free cash flow here as relevant to dividend coverage. As you can see, their free cash flow is significantly greater than their current dividend yield. And this is after they've spent all the money they need to run their business. So I feel very, very confident that free cash flow coverage since they've started a dividend has been more than adequate and therefore I think the company will continue to be able to provide dividend growth going forward. Next, I'd like to take a look at, at EBITDA or earnings before income taxes, depreciation and amortization. EBITDA growth has also been very consistent. And as you can see, their EBITDA payout ratio is even lower. And if I bring monthly closing stock price into the equation. This company trades typically at about a 6 to 7, 6.7 times EBITDA, and it's currently trading at 5.7 times EBITDA. So that's another valuation measurement that I feel is attractive. I also like to look at 
price to sales as a valuation measurement. As you can see, the company trades at a very low price to sales ratio currently relative to historical norms. So all in all, I think this is an extremely attractive dividend growth stock. I'd like to conclude this video by going back to adjusted operating earnings and looking at the normal PE ratio as a valuation reference. Here I'm using the five-year normal PE ratio of 13.2. As I use this drop-down window going back all the way, you know, over 18 years, I want you to notice that a 13 to 14 normal PE ratio is very relevant relevant to this company. And so, you know, using a number like 14 or even 13, if you wanted to be conservative, gives you a very reasonable valuation level for this company. So even using the, the lowest normal PE ratio I could pick over time, which is the 17 year normal PE ratio of 12.9, this company still provides really exciting capital appreciation potential as well as dividend growth going forward. That, that would be at the end of one year, but even going out to three years, this company has the opportunity to generate 16% annualized rates of return. These are what if calculations, of course, based on the fact that the estimates turn out to be accurate. And so the other thing that I like to check when I'm looking at estimates is how accurate the analysts have been. And as you can see, since 2011, the analysts have either, the company has either beat or met analyst expectation. To look at a summary of analyst estimates one year in advance or two years in advance, you can see that the analysts have been very accurate when forecasting this company. So that gives me some confidence at least that these estimates might be within reasonable ranges of accuracy. And so even utilizing a 12 or 13 PE ratio, I believe Penske is currently very attractively valued here. Um, as an aside, since I started doing research on this company, the stock price has been on a tear. It's up about 4% today as of 12.09 when I'm producing this video. And it was up relatively strong the day before yesterday and modestly up yesterday. So I think this is a very interesting dividend growth stock. It's just coming into its own. It's only been paying a dividend since 2011. Uh, when you look at it long term, I do want to put a couple of caveats out here. You can see the company has had excellent growth throughout the years, averaging over 12%. They did drop a little in the recession. And as I mentioned in the written part, the company is relatively recession resistant due to the fact that it operates such premium brands, BMW, Mercedes, etc. But since coming out of the recession, their earnings growth has been exemplary. The company has um, increased their dividend, as I mentioned, 23 consecutive quarters in a row. And the dividend growth has been exceptional so far. But they are main, the management has committed to maintaining approximately a 30% payout ratio, which is what the company's been paying. Dividend growth has been incredible. You can see a yield on cost had you bought it in December of 2011, your current yield would have been 2.2%. Today, that would be yielding 7.5%. So when it's being so difficult to find good dividend growth stocks today, I think Penske's worth a closer look. I'm certainly doing that and it may end up in my portfolio real soon because as I said in the article, the more I look at it, the more I like it. This has been Chuck Carnival saying thanks for listening.